I have an issue, a big one, and I want to share with you the way that I've been thinking about rectifying it because you might be experiencing the same problem yourselves. And that problem is to do with Wi-Fi speeds and connectivity inside your house. So without further ado, if you find this beneficial, give a like and subscribe to the channel. Okay, we need a little bit of a backstory here for this to make sense and why this is happening. So in Australia, the government spent like, you know, $60 billion upgrading our uh, internet connection. And don't laugh if you live in any third world country, but my internet connection to my property is 50 meg during the day and 100 meg at night because of a, a peak boost, they call it. However, I will be eligible very soon for optical to the property, which can give me a much faster connection. So I'm looking forward to doing that, which is one of the reasons why I'm also upgrading, but it isn't the main reason. This thing here next to me is Telstra's, which is an internet provider here in Australia. They give you a modem router with 4G backup. So if internet goes down, no problem, switches over to 4G and you're using your, your credit from there. However, this is the second one I've had. I actually had the second generation. This is the third generation. So this is black, the old one was white. You guys might have it at home as well. The thing is, it's very interesting. If you look behind me, you'll see I have smart home devices. These smart home devices run on a band called 2.4 gigahertz. And it took me a while to work out with the initial problem originally, but these routers broadcast in dual band meaning 2.4 and 5.8 on the same network. What happens is you can go into the modem and you can disable and only have it run on one. But as I explained, these smart home devices run on 2.4 gigahertz. Now the first modem actually went faulty in a way which is unique because the 2.4 gigahertz band just stops working. 5.8 works, but there's nothing on 2.4. Got a replace last year, Telstra helped me out, gave me an upgrade, didn't have to pay anything much out of my pocket, which was good. However, 12 months later, same issue. No signal, no broadcast, no matter what you do, reset 10 times, unplug everything, I did all the checks. So what I've done is I go, you know what, stuff this. I'm gonna go and buy myself this. I actually didn't want this. I actually wanted the older Google Nest Wi-Fi because I saw them on special here in Australia for $159. They're kind of discontinued from what I heard. They used to be $299. Now, the old one only broadcast in 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. But after upgrading my MacBook Pro to the new one, as you guys have seen on the channel in other videos, that can actually support 6E. So you're broadcasting obviously in the 2.4, 5.8 and 6 gigahertz. So it's a tri-band router. And I wanna see, is it gonna improve my internet connectivity and speeds? And hopefully being Google and they have their own smart devices and they on the website they explain everything about how it's good with Nest or wireless products in the house. I wanna see if this does a better job than what that did on the 5.8. Well, it's dead anyway, so. It does work in 5.8, but it doesn't work on anything else. This one here, I got lucky. It's normally like $370. Uh, found it at Officeworks. Uh, they match an online price. I got it for $260. So 100 bucks more, $95 extra. And I'm gonna go with a bit of an upgrade. So let's dive right in. Smash it open. So you can see the tri-band uh, Wi-Fi 6E and it fixes itself. <laughs> hey, if only everything could fix itself, hey? Let's have a look what's inside. Okay. Pretty, uh, pretty small. I actually expect it to be a little bit larger. Nice little glossy orb. It's gonna be pretty inconspicuous. Power, internet, WAN, sorry, WAN and your uh, ethernet connection. That's pretty easy. Oh, what a cute little power plug as well. A Google style, Australian plug, makes sense. What else have we got in here?
We've got a um, Ethernet connection. Cool. Nice white cable. Nothing else in there. So how the how do we set it up? Hey, that's the fun stuff. So just before I completely disconnect the uh, old device, I thought to show you the speeds that I'm getting on the old one. So this is my MacBook Pro connected on 5.8 gigahertz. And I'm getting around 50 megs a second, 52 megs. And my iPhone as well, if I run it at the same time, that'll make a massive difference. It's running at around seven or eight. And this is something I wanna see if it will get fixed uh, when I change the uh, router over in a second. So roughly, yeah, roughly about 15 megabytes uh, upload. And on the iPhone, it's about two. So not extremely fast speeds. That's what I was uh, talking about earlier. So I just thought to share with you guys where I placed the Google Wi-Fi Pro. And my cat's uh, getting involved. Uh, it was supposed to be in that cabinet underneath the television, but I realized that for really Wi-Fi, you want to have it exposed as much as possible. And it produced way too much heat being inside of the cabinet and it's acting like a little TV management uh, cable hider thingy. So it kind of worked out okay. As you can see, it's pretty inconspicuous. So if you want to place them around your house, you won't really tend to notice it. So setting it up was pretty straightforward. You need to install the Google Home app, which I luckily already had installed. And then it's four steps and you are up and running after you scan the QR code on the bottom. And as you guys can see here, this is what it looks like. So you have one Wi-Fi device sitting here. And in the settings, it's pretty interesting. There's some really cool stuff in here. One of the benefits that I found is that it actually can show you all the devices on your network, which is really good. And if you see, if we jump in here on the MacBook Pro, it actually is connected through Wi-Fi 6. And then the other thing is as well, if you have a family of people in your house, you can actually turn on and off devices uh, on the network. So if you've got kids or something, you can uh, disable them from being on the internet late at night. The other good thing is, is that it offers a guest network. So if you want to set up a, a private network just for guests, you don't have to put them onto your own uh, main network, which is really good. But there's not really much settings. The only thing that I did in here was uh, under deeper network settings is advanced settings. See here how it says WPA3 and IPv6. I have these both turned off just to enable compatibility with my smart home. It was a little bit annoying because I obviously had to go and reset every single device. And if you guys have smart appliances, it's actually really interesting. The LifeX uh, app and the NanoLeaf app actually didn't detect the devices, but the Google Smart Home app did. So that's something for you guys to uh, consider as well if you run into that issue that I did. However, everything seems to be working really well at the moment and it's all connected and my laptop's on Wi-Fi 6 and all my smart home devices are running on 2.4 and whatever is connected on 5.8 is connected on 5.8. Now, is there any faster from an internet speed perspective? Let's have a look. Like I said, the internet speed is capped pretty much around 50 megabytes. So we're gonna see what the computer speed is like. We're gonna run that test. And it's you know 3 a.m. so I hardly doubt there's many people and congestion on the network. And as you can see here, I'm getting about 40 to 50 megabytes. And the speed that's on my iPhone, if you guys can leave a comment below, because I can't get the iPhone to run any faster than seven meg. And that's even on the old Wi-Fi network that I had connected before. These iPhone 13 Pros, as far as I'm aware, have actually a 6E a modem in here so it should be running at a higher and faster speed but reality is the connection speeds that i'm receiving isn't much faster than what my old network used to be purely because the network connection or the internet that i have coming into the property is not going to take advantage of this wi-fi 6e network which is why originally i thought just to go for the cheaper one so is the google wi-fi pro worth it well in reality as you can see, my smart home lights are working and the rest of my smart home is going really well. It wasn't perfect. I did have to reset the network a couple of times to actually get everything connected. And after a couple of days, I noticed things would disconnect.
but for the last week it's been working pretty much seamlessly and it also seems to work a lot faster so when I press the the home app on the uh, iPhone to turn lights on and off or I use Siri it connects without any uh, challenges and it seems to turn on and off faster which is a little bit different to what I had previously with the old uh, Telstra modem. The other thing is that the little puck that they gave it's uh, a little bit annoying because you can't plug other devices and next to it, it takes up too much space so you know Google fix that one for us please. The other thing is I noticed that when I go outside I can kind of tell when it's swapping bands. I don't lose connectivity but I can see that the Wi-Fi strength drops off or changes slightly. Being the fact that it is a mesh router and you're supposed to have multiple points spread out of the property I can't comment on that. I did sell enterprise grade Wi-Fi where we did a full spectrum analysis and bounce frequencies off the wall to see what would be perfect but in reality no one's going to be doing that from home. So is it worth it? For a simple, easy to use router, it looks cool, works well, and I would recommend it. And I'm kind of happy that I actually went for the Pro because I realized the old model didn't have a network in, which is what I needed to plug in my uh, home security system. So if you guys like this video, please make sure to subscribe and I hope it brought some insight into maybe something that you guys are also uh, having problems with at home.